Are you trying to have sex with me? You made it here, Soul here, and our Scarlett Johansson hero archetype, Afira, is here. You know, since she does what every girl does to bring down a bigger opponent by wrapping her thighs around someone's head and smacking them on the ground. Pretty realistic. Sadly, it's locked behind using a feat, but alas, there are plenty of feats in this video. A Fiera is $8, and in this video, I'm gonna let you know if it's worth buying or saving your money to acquire her for 15k steel instead. Personally, I would wait two weeks or a week at least before you hop onto Frauner or just play AI Breach so you don't have to deal with the hits done for days because she does have an infinite combo which is hilarious to perform and it's not that hard to do it i've been doing it accidentally the entire time ubisoft did announce that next week she is getting nerfed and buffed as you can see here infinite combo will be removed whether that be removing the heavy displacement on her neutral bash which i think they should do they're adjusting her hitboxes because on live it's as large as peacekeepers which makes sense since her mace is fairly tiny but alas they're probably gonna make it a little bit more viable with increasing the trajectories or the hitboxes of her side heavies at least they're buffing her tier 4 which i don't know how they will and i'm hoping they will be nerfing the damage on her tier 1 since it deals 20 while most projectiles only deal or 10 damage for a tier 1 there's a clip here as you can see here, that the shield does ricochet to other opponents and your teammates and can go back to you which is hilarious so hopefully they fix that and then they adjusted her stamina consumption on her neutral bash because on live she's only able to faint three times before going on to stamina and that in my opinion is pretty poor neutral pressure i won't lie to you though her default fashion is the best in the game i thought warden Jenhu or even tiandi's default fashion was good but this takes the cake her fashion alone is worth spending eight dollars if you truly care about that stuff but is she really a character for you what makes her different from say a hero like basic warden honestly a million things because warden's been power crept to the high heavens but really now, if you're a Yorn player, you're gonna like these wall splats because Ubisoft didn't test this and she can infinitely wall splat you with their bash. Really neat trick, especially to be on the receiving end if I do say so myself. Just an all around type of insufferable. For those individuals out there that are looking for another mace character, is she gonna be to your playstyle? Well, honestly, I think if you wanted to play a hero like Conqueror, this is probably not gonna be your hero because she feels more like Shinobi in so many aspects and has the mix-up viability of Nobushi. So if you enjoy the dancing and the flipping around, this is more of the playstyle of someone who enjoys a slippery hero. But how does this character feel though? Well, if you're thinking of a maze hero, I feel like most people will be thinking of someone with a little bit more durability, and of course this character is fairly safe and has a lot of versatility. However, she feels like an assassin type character. If you guys are watching the Warriors Den, this character is sort of like a dancer fighter class, and she really feels that way because her flip while have great animations, they definitely don't feel like a tank or a conqueror. If you take a look at her animations, it really feels like she's floating through the air and just dancing through the battlefield. Whereas most of the knight characters, they have a burly type of uh, you know aesthetic to them. Their attacks feel like they have a lot of power. Warmongers, conquerors, warden, even lawbringer, all these characters feel like they have a lot of weight to them. Where she just throws out these attacks willy nilly like an assassin type character. So she has the assassin's vibe to her and if you don't want that well i don't think this character is necessarily for you however i will say she is incredibly fun to play still she has many strengths and not too many weaknesses besides her hitboxes which they will be adjusting now before we go over the balance of this character or how she feels to play in dominion i kind of want to go over her executions because they look freaking amazing like this character alone eight bucks oof i think you're i think you're stealing from ubisoft i'm not gonna lie to you guys let's just check it out all right so my fear is almost rep one but you know she already looks freaking beautiful even with just the default colors and the default outfits this is one of the reasons why i love for honor because they can make a character look so darn good especially when you don't even add like a bunch of random purple or pink or red colors to the kit now let's just go over execution i think i bought pretty much all of hers but let's just go with the sultana's sanitation okay this is your fastest execution so you want to be equipping this if you don't want to buy one of those concussion ones where you grab random knives and stick them in their faces you know this one is fantastic it's it just shows how badass she is now this one oh, i love when she just you know throws her opponent around by wrapping her legs around their necks it's just super badass like atomic blonde stuff you know just atomic blonde things or scarlet johannison vibes so satisfying and that mace looks amazing Bates End is one of her other ones, and this one feels so brutal. She's like smacking this warden around 24-7. It looks so good. Very satisfying, very satisfying. A lot of good sounds that make it feel like he's in for a hell of a time. Scholar of Death, this is the other one. 
when she throws the shield and she jumps over them. Amazing camera work. I love when the camera zooms in or pans in and then it kind of pans out. It looks really nice to the eye. Especially on both ends too. And it feels like she's going in slow motion and that's not like a unrealistic move to do. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure people do that, at least in movies. Um, and it looks badass as fudge. Badass as fudge. All right, she's got a lot of emotes and I don't really want to go over, but overall, I'd say she has a lot of good emote spam potential. I mean, this one, this one everyone uses. Everyone uses this. I used to be able to do this, but with two hands and not necessarily to this extent. <laughs> okay, it's got a little drum there, so that's pretty cute. I like it. Ball signal, pretty cool. I mean, it's it's solid opening to let you know. This one is pretty cute too, because she just like does a little like a shield shake or you know shakes off the dust off her shoulder. I like that. It. It's cool. The mace flip, pretty solid, not too shabby. The respectful a bow for the honorable duelists out there, and tempt your fate, pretty cool. It's a beckon. And the hysterical laugh. I mean, she's, I feel like she's laughing the entire time when she's in Dominion. She makes a lot of noises. And a good thing about her armor sets is that it's going to show in her armor. Like, you'll see a bunch of colors. Because she has a lot of metallic plate to her. And that's one of my favorite things about, you know, the knight faction <laughs> in general. She's not really a knight, but, you know, people who have iron uh, or bronze on their armor, it looks really good. Unfortunately, she does have the ornaments on her arms, and I really, I really dislike that. It, it feels like I don't have as much personality as, you know, putting an ornament right on my face. There are some good arm ornaments, but I just don't really like it as much. I mean, this one's one of the nicer ones, but I'd rather have something right here in her face, you know? If you like that type of stuff, you'll probably enjoy it. However, I have different tastes, and it's just not for me personally. And of course, she does get to use, you know, a bunch of other mythic skins, from all the factions so that's what I love about it and I love using the forge one because that is my favorite effect because I feel like Super Saiyan 3 Goku or Super Saiyan 2 whichever one has the electrics now if you want to play an overtuned character I think this is probably going to be your best bet her wall splats are an issue not the chain kick mind you which was intended where her left side heavy can wall splat you but her feignable neutral bash that is the option to be a heavy input that wall splats I will say that the neutral bash has about three times before you can feign it and then you run out of stamina so it's in it's incredibly stamina heavy in my opinion at least until the next patch where they will be buffing her and we'll see probably maybe four feints or five feints so we'll just see how we'll see how it plays out a lot of wall splat language happening here and she's a wall splat character essentially testing grounds Jormungandr where you have easy access to wall splats on every single mix-ups with high damage values. This is fun for the user and unfun for the enemy. That's usually how For Honor Balance is nowadays. The wall splats and hit stuns are the strongest part of our kit right now. You know, we joke about spending 8 bucks just to play an overpowered hero and say it's just the majority of bad players complaining about it, but the reality of this situation is that all these wall splats are unhealthy for the game, especially with how high these damage values are. If the damage values weren't that high, I think it would be perfectly fine. She can keep you on a wall the entire time or dish out a ton of damage because her mix-ups are just like Nobushi but better if you think about it. Nobushi's kick is only 566 MS while hers is 500 and Nobushi can wall splat but her kit is much more limited when it comes to at least 1v1 potential. She can use an undodgeable heavy if they try to dodge the bash early to land big heavy damage, but for Afira, she has the undodgeable top heavy in case they panic dodge just like Nobushi, or she can kick and use her left heavy to wall splat for 27 damage top heavy afterwards after landing the 18 damage heavy. Keep in mind after a heavy parry, she can also just use her neutral bash to wall splat you for another top heavy because they let you use the heavy after the bash. The damage values are in line with pre-CCU for punishes on heavy parries. Only Lawbringer really has these monstrous damage values today, but I suppose we're slowly creeping back to old CCU. However, that's impossible because they nerfed pretty much all heroes chain heavies to low values like Shigoku, Jun, and Raider. These damage values are 16 for the left heavy and 27 for the top heavy equating to 43 damage for a simple heavy parry or not dodging the 500 MS bash. A little bit overtuned in my opinion unless they really want to go for this, you know, wall supply type of hero. We have a testing grounds Yorm situation where we need to decide to either keep all these wall splats with high values and revert other damage values that have been gutted or fix this issue. I think we have a simple solution here for Ubisoft though and it shouldn't really be that hard. All we basically need to do is take out the wall splat heavy input on the neutral bash and perchance the chain bash too. There are a couple ways to go about this though. There are walls everywhere in Dominion and literally nobody could avoid them no matter how well you repositioned. Wall splats will happen unless you pick a black prior. We can keep the wall splats after a deflect because that's a skill gap that rewards the player 
for deflecting for a lot of damage. It will keep her incredibly unique in that aspect while not being too overtuned. Sure, other heroes deflects are 20 to 22 damage, except for gladiators, of course, but power creep is a bitch, so there's no use fighting that. We do not need wall splats on every single mix-ups. If we do give her wall splats on every single mix-ups, we need to make sure that her follow-up heavy does little to no damage so that the top heavy is a very significant amount of damage that unfortunately gives her a really long time before she's able to punish, but it makes her unique in that aspect. She already has a guaranteed damage with her top and right heavy attack after the follow bash for 18 damage, so the left one could just be the wall splat skill that can punish opponents for being, well, you know, out of position if there is a wall nearby. I think this would be a fine addition because it would give her the option to have viable offense and still do damage while also giving her extra damage if there is a wall nearby. We can even change the damage values after the kick into a normal heavy, say like 24 damage or so. I mean, this kind of reminds me of the comparison when we had Griffin nerf significantly with his chain kick and cha his chain kick is guard break punishable, unlike this character. And she can do up to 43 damage total, where Griffin was only a mere 27 damage which, mind you, got nerfed to 24 damage. It really only makes sense, and it makes her a really strong character still while removing the damage values that aren't supposed to be even there. This keeps the uniqueness of the character, which 99% of the community want, while making the damage values fair and still strong to keep her viable and strong compared to the other top tier heroes. I think it'll be a lot less prevalent when there's not as much of fear as in the game right now, but at the moment, you can definitely see that there's a huge issue with this character, especially with all the stun locks. The tier 1 and the tier 3 grab moves, which have amazing animations, but I think the tier 1 does a little bit too much damage. 20 for a tier 1 doesn't really make any sense, whereas comparative to all the kunais or uh, Janu's kunai or tier 1s in general, they usually do 10 damage or even less. 20 damage for tier 1 while stun locking, allowing for a teammate to land a heavy, is incredibly powerful. Also an enjoyable experience when you pop revenge and get into the stun lock of these feats. Great balancing. It's more prevalent since everyone is playing this hero, and there's four or more fears on a match, but as other people play other characters, we'll see less. But given the fact that this hero is so fun, I doubt it won't die down until a month or so. Now listen, I really want this wall splat character to work, okay? It's fun, it's unique, and it gives a little bit of character to this roster where basically everyone has chain 50-50 bashes. So if any of you guys have better suggestions, please let me know down below so I can read them and maybe Ubisoft will, you know, decide to listen to us. So that's pretty much it for the balance of the hero. If you enjoy a really strong character and really mobile character, or this hero is basically for you. Those shaman players, Nobushi players, and also those shinobi players. You will be enjoying this character. And the thing is, I want to go over quickly some of her animations. There's a few animations that are reused, but with the prevalency of her animations, like her flips and her mix-ups in general, it keeps her feeling very fresh compared to reused animations like Majai, because you can really tell that he's basically Berserker <laughs> in his other form and Shaolin in the stat form. It overshadows her reused animations, and in my opinion, that's perfectly fine because she feels like a new character overall. Some of the reused animations are Shaman's dodge attacks. This basically just is essentially a pirate's dodge attack as well. Deandi's finisher right heavy, Peacekeeper's top finisher heavy, Warden and I mean maybe Pirate Zone attack, and Valkyrie's forward running attack as well. And she also has very similar animations when it comes to Valkyrie's uh, animations in general when she dodges. But overall, I really think this hero is, you know, her own character, and I feel like the devs actually, well at least the art team, the animation team, thank god you beautiful souls out there, actually did an incredible job with this character. I know there's people that don't like reused animations, but I can say for sure and safely that, you know, if you spend 8 bucks on this character, you're not gonna notice too many reused animations, which is the good thing, because the animations that she has right now currently will outshine the reused ones, and they're very few and far between, because this character feels unique. She has the shield like Valkyrie, but plays very different from Valkyrie. And you've reached that point in the video, I think I've discussed pretty much everything I have to say about the character. I believe she's a great addition to the cast, amazing fashion, top tier, worth $8 alone, and all that money should go directly to the art team so they can make more executions for us, better animations, and amazing heroes for us to play in the future. None of it should go to the CEOs because they make enough money and they make poor decisions trying to catch trends 24-7. And I'm sick of it because they're canceling so many so many games from Ubisoft, all right? And they're delaying the inevitable of making even worse games in the future. And I just hope that she gets a few nerfs or tweaks 
to her wall splats because she should not be able to do that 24 7. i want to take the devs tie them up and have them play their own game for at least five hours because i don't think they actually know how it feels to get wall splat 24 7 in dominion it's not really that fun not being able to control your character is not a good mechanic in any game whatsoever it reminds me of maze freeze and overwatch nobody wants to be frozen and nobody wants to be able to feel like they can't do anything in the game that's just called poor balancing and it's unfun games are supposed to be fun it should be competitive to an extent which it is but it's also unfun to be stuck for days and not be able to do anything especially from neutral and making one bad read and that's why they removed centurion cutscene and that's why they nerfed griffin's bash i'm probably gonna get this character to really high rep probably not 70 as if i get a hero to rep 70 there's no point in playing the character anymore because I like a little bit of the grind and I'd wish they'd maybe uncap it to 100 or just an infinite amount so I could show people that I love this character so much that I'm willing to play it 24-7. How have your experiences been with this character? I've seen a lot of positive things about it. There's a few negative things when it comes to the infinite and the wall splats but overall I think this is way more well received than Magi and <laughs> I don't think she's gonna be a weak hero at all. Maybe strong a tier or a plus tier for sure because her wall splats are insane for huge amounts of damage high skill curve and really high skill floor too in my opinion i um, hope the games have been treating you guys well and you guys haven't been lagging as much and it seems that ubisoft probably fixed the servers where the console players aren't getting disconnected 24 7 so that's a good thing thank you for watching everybody let me know your thoughts with your experiences down below i'll be seeing you all shortly with the warmonger black prior and berserker buffs video on that soon and my thoughts take care bye bye See you later.